The Weekly Terry. I need to get a sound effect for this. Damn I, we it. have one. I know. I forgot Whoa, to insert it again. Terry. Here we go. Oh. My name is Brian. That is Shane. This is The Weekly Terry. And if you guys don't know what this is, this is when we climb through Terry Metalis' trash outside of his house. We'll comb <laughs> through his tweets. We are... We have infiltrated his bank, and we know his banking information. We hacked his phone. We get to look at all of his WhatsApp and Grinder accounts. We are here, and we are talking about Terry Metellus, because this is the Weekly Terry, and we got the inside scoop on old Terry Metellus. Yeah, this inside scoop that everyone else <laughs> That's on Twitter. <laughs> Listen, guys. Actually, we don't, we, we, don't have the, we don't have the inside scoop. We're just looking at his Twitter. In fact, I'm such a nerd. I made a program that scraped all of his tweets and putting it into Excel spreadsheets to make it easier. <laughs> yeah, well, I, lo- I appreciate the ease of access, which Thanks. I'm not even using today. But yes, uh, well, you guys got to stop fighting with Terry yes. on Twitter. Stop. Okay. Stop we'll, fighting stop with Terry. Stop trying to like incite him. Okay, stop saying things. You know, listen, it's rare to get this sort of, you know, communication with somebody this close to a TV show. I mean, think about it. Think about all your people that are out there. Are they talking to you on Twitter? No, they're not. And you know who you are. (laughs) You you You, know who you are. You know who you are. You know us. Stop. Please. Yeah. I respectfully request you to please stop harassing well you know and you can be like there's like there's reasonable conversation and stuff like that but you know anyways just do your best um a couple things from the terry metallis this week so terry we did learn, you know that not only is he a guy who makes tv shows but he's also a guy who watches tv shows so apparently the three three shows this is what he's saying here three shows have absolutely outstanding first seasons they are House of the Dragon, Andor, and Reboot on Hulu. Oh, Reboot's actually quite good. And I would actually agree with, after episode six of Andor, I would agree with all three. Really? Um, yeah, and here's here we go. Special mention to The Patient, which, yes, that's a great show, with, with uh, um, Michael from The Office. I just totally drew a blank on his name. Oh, Steve Carell. Steve Carell. About the serial killer? Uh, yeah, Handmaid's Handmaid's Tale, which I can't seem to get myself to watch. I can't stand it. I've tried. It's, it's every episode, just like so, makes, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, and Rick and Morty, who don't qualify, but also crushing it. Yes, and to be fair, um, Terry Metalis is a massive fan of Rick and Morty, and I've been telling you for years how good that show was. So I know, but I can't watch it. I, we've already talked about this. I know. Um, yeah, so, uh, and that's the weekly Terry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be terrible. Uh, let's see what else do we got going on here? Um, Terry has been in New York for the, for Comic-Con. Yes. He was at the panel. So he wasn't exactly all over this thing too much, but, um, we do know that, uh, he, Amanda Plummer, who we're going to talk about here pretty soon, um, was the only actor, actress, actor that he wanted for Vat for Vatic. That's yeah. in Picard season three. Yeah, well, we also found out a few weeks before the news that he's actually a big fan of Amanda Plummer and Pulp Fiction. Right. So he's yeah he's a huge fan of Amanda a huge fan of Amanda Plummer, and. Uh, And her brand of acting, from what we understand, is really just going to play well into the character of Vatic. And I think you're going to get kind of this just person who's at the edge of like, maybe at the edge of, what's the right word? Um, Craziness? Insanity? Yeah, insanity. Like somebody who's like just, apparently there's a very sympathetic reason why she's, why she wants to kill Picard and yeah. destroy the Federation. I would say it's, Which, it's almost like she's someone who was sat down and they pinned her eyes open with tape and they made her watch three seasons of Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> okay. What's, what's, that's not good. Um, <laughs> you shouldn't do that to anybody, by the way. 
so anyways, we got that. Uh, Terry said, just you wait until you all see LeVar Burton's performance in season three. It's going to be some Jordy you've seen before and a whole lot you've always wanted to. Ooh, and I love this. I'm sorry. When you're done, I want to interject. No, go ahead. Terry ha- Terry does a lot of these things. So we need to remember when we're going to watch this. Terry has warned us. You're going to see a lot of what you've seen before and then a lot that you've always wanted to. Right. And I, got, I, I can't wait to know the definition of that. Like, what have I always wanted to see that I'm not aware of? You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what I've always wanted to see. But Terry knows. And I'm excited to find out what that is. Now, is it like what I wanted to see now as an adult or when I was 13? No, because when you were 13, nobody should put on TV what you wanted to see. Okay, so, I wasn't even going to go there. I was, like, being, I was being serious. I guess I guess technically if it was 13, it would be a Marina Serdis show by herself. Right, yeah. On OnlyFans. <laughs> she gets her own show. <clears throat> All right. Um, I guess, yeah. Th- thanks for making that a new joke. I meant oh, like yeah. when I was a kid and had no, and like I had like ideas of watching the Romulans sword fight with uh, Cardassians or whatever, you know? Okay, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think these characters are going to do things that they have never done, but maybe they should have been able to do more in some of the shows. Right. I think that's what he's talking about, you know? So one thing here, my friend, is that Jonathan Frakes retweeted the Paramount, the Star Trek on Paramount Plus account, they tweeted out the trailer and they said the final voyage premieres on February 16th. And Jonathan Frakes retweeted that with a comment saying, well, maybe not final. Dun, dun, dun. This isn't even the weekly. It's not even the weekly Jonathan. But, it's the weekly but, Terry. but Terry Metallus retweeted it. Oh, nice. Okay, That's good. how this, this is how this plays in. He That's retweeted you know. it. Yep. So explain it. Well, uh, Terry Mata- uh, Jonathan Frakes and Patrick Stewart shared a moment where they were talking about maybe making a movie. <laughs> I can't, I can't I not do this. Why are you keep doing this? <laughs> what, if, what if we made a movie? Okay, and, that's better. And Jonathan Frakes was like, well, you know, there's an open slot. And, and <laughs> Picard has no idea what he's talking about. It's like, oh, it's holding them up. That's how they it's, stand up. At it's Paramount Plus. holding them up. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it could possibly be that they are making, um, are planning on making a movie, not because Star Trek Four was held up, but because they want to make a movie and they can't seem to make an actual Star Trek Four movie because it's cursed, right? Mm. Yes. So I could totally see that if this is really as as well received as we think it's going to be there could possibly be a final TNG movie it it's possible I, okay it's possible but look it shouldn't Jerry happen though saying, yeah he keeps saying this is a satisfactory conclusion right to the TNG story right I don't know if we want a movie at the end of this. Well, maybe we don't want a movie with all of them. Maybe we want a conclusion to TNG and maybe when they pass the baton, maybe mm. then we get some cameos or whatever for the new, for a new series with new characters. I've said right. it for years. Stop going to the past. I like strange new worlds, but it, it should be, it, that should, I understand canonically that it should be taking place that time period, but Oh my God, I would trade it in a heartbeat for a show that took place in the future of the story discovery i'm looking at you kid like hey stop going backwards like have the have the i'm sorry have the balls to tell a story in the future it seems like no one wants to do it because they're so worried that if they tell a story in the future and they get it wrong they're going to lose their job so there's 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 they're hanging out in the comfortable past and they're basing all their decisions on the weight of the writers that came before them the titans that came before them terry metallis is like screw it I'm making a story. Even season two of Picard somehow figured out how to go to the past. That's what they're always doing. Sorry. Well, I, I guess, no, you, you, you make a good point. But I think, in all fairness, a lot of people thought the best way to bring Star Trek back in was to spend time in, in, that, in that place. You know, and, but I think the problem now is we've done it, and now we're all just ready to move on. Like, we're ready for something that's post, you know, TNG, post Voyager. Post Picard, technically, right? You know, um, something after twenty four hundred. So, 
that's what we want next. I think that's what you're saying, right? Yes, and it and, and it infuriates me. Well, to, it, no, 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 no. Let me let me finish. That it bothers me. What infuriates me is that Discovery, after it ruined the past, went to the future and started and writing the, the Cliff Note version of the future on their way. It, it ruined the it ruined the past, and then it ruined the future. That's a really good way of putting it because now they've said things that have happened in the previous. 900 years i know that now are now canonical you're right that is true it's like it's it's like whoever wrote the set was like you know just burn it all down like yeah. we're gonna we're gonna wreck this and they literally sent discovery away because it was so poorly received and it made no sense in, canonically to anything going on that they that they moved it into the future and now it's to in the future and it's making statements yeah regarding the last 900 years of their time which is involving our Future, and those yes. statements either I mean, now that now they have to stick for it to be cano canonical or that be yeah. ignored completely. Well, the good news is it may be a while before we really get to anything that's difficult. Well, you, you, know, you, you mean you mean like the fall of the Federation? Yeah, the fall of the Federation, the burn. That's going to take a while. So we actually have to have time travel problems first. So there's and and got to remember Enterprise also screwed up a few things there. Yeah, but the temporal at least wars. not screwed it up. But they the temporal war thing is, man, I feel sorry for whoever has to deal with that. Although Terry Metalis is probably the guy who could, who would deal with that since he was on Enterprise. You know what's funny is Terry would be the most qualified person to write the temporal wars. Right. Not, not only did he write write the episodes on Enterprise, and he was part of Voyager, but also. He understands time travel much better than the average writer, and he made yeah. he made uh, thirteen monkeys, twelve monkeys. Sorry, yes. sorry, twelve monkeys. Why is it there? twelve monkeys? Like, oh my god! Like, this guy is the king of of understanding how this works. So, if he had to write the temporal wars, like, I would really like it to be the guy that writes time travel for fun. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and if Picard season three goes off like I think we think it's going to, I don't know what Terry's next project is, but I hope it's his own Star Trek series from the beginning, and it's something going into the future. That would be great. Right, that you would know, be something good. new, you know. Or if you want to pass the baton off, because he does say, like we said earlier, he so they will pass the baton uh, to the next generation. He said either definitely or certainly, one of those words you, you were talking about. He said they definitely. definitely will pass it to the next generation. Interesting. In you know what? This is this is starting to make me really, really hope. Okay, a that this is successful. For as a Trekkie, I want to see it be successful. But if it's successful, we get more in Terry Mattel's Star Trek where he can actually write the stuff Enterprise promised us. In fact, if you look at yeah. when the Enterprise timeline matches up, it matches up to like the time temporal wars being around the that the time. Very shortly after what happened with Picard, right? 20, well, 25, 30 or something like that, right? It's going to be it's still a ways down the road. I mean, I think we need, you're it's right. It's like 80 but I think years we, from what, what, what's going on right now. But if we're passing it off, then it's not going to be temporal wars. Because we're passing it off to Seven. We're passing it off to, that's who it's going to be passed to. To Jordy's, uh, Jordy's daughter, daughters. That's who it's going to get passed to. Uh, to Picard's son, possibly. Oh, dude! Yeah. You know what? I, I got, I got, I got, a, I got a bone to pick with all you Trekkies out there, because no one believes us, and so That's few a, people have watched the video that believe us. And we're at this point where I'm like, look, it's gonna, it's, we weren't, we're not guessing. This is not like, oh, this is a wild podcast theory that has no basis in reality. Like, no, no, it's real. There's just a lot of information out there about it. And we caught it and we shared it. But listen, we don't have to. When Picard season three comes out and you guys love it, okay, or hopefully you love it and you see that what happens, then just come back and remember where you where you got it from first. Uh, another thing here that that Terry retweeted somebody else uh, that I thought was interesting. Um, he retweeted somebody called Live Long and Prosper because there was someone complaining that Worf was a pacifist. And uh, Terry kind of pushed back against this on Twitter, and it says instead, this person said, uh, Worf didn't say he was a pacifist, only that he prefers pacifism now to Riker. Um, and Terry goes on to say here um, something similar to that, 
but he goes, remember, Worf has a sword on his back. Right. So he's not a pacifist. So that's something we need to, for those people who are upset, you know, I think, honestly, I think Worf's journey, and Michael Dorn did say that um, at first, you know, he wasn't sure, but they convinced him of a few things, and now he likes it. And it might be something to the effect of, um, you know, kind of like a Rafi redemption story, because remember, we left Rafi in season two, and she kind of wasn't all right. Right. Oh, she know? definitely and was so, not all right. No, oh, man, but, but shouldn't, she, hold up. Shouldn't she have been better now that her son forget. was back? Well, I don't know, but she has seemed to have a lot more issues. Remember, she's got the whole thing with her her son. Right. She's got the problem with, yeah. you know, yeah, she's drugs and alcohol nuts. or whatever. Yeah. She's got problems. And so maybe Worf is, Worf is the guy who's going to, like, help her through that, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, some discipline, some uh, character stuff. Right. So I could see that happening. And I don't, you know, I think he, Terry dropped so many great hints um, just at the panel and stuff like that. I don't think we have a whole lot of other juicy things here from him, but uh, it's going to keep coming. Yeah. So we're going to keep taking a look at everything and, um, and we'll make sure we share that with you. Yes. And I got a little sidetracked guys because, um, uh, the discovery thing, um, and <laughs> you're somewhere else. Uh, the weekly Terry is no, 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 because weekly. because I believe that the temporal wars can be a series that happens very closely after Picard. Because according to Enterprise, the temp so there was two temporal wars, like the dirty wars that took place with like the man, the the enter the, what that Enterprise talked about the majority of the time, and then later on. The 29th century was the people that that came back to make sure those rewards didn't take place and ensure mm. the Federation. So we actually could get a Star Trek temporal wars uh, uh, show. And it's not it's not that out of the realm, especially considering all the video games are all about temporal this and temporal that and timelines and all that stuff. And oh, they're yeah. talking about temporal wars all the times in those games. It's completely possible. Okay, one more thing from Terry, the weekly Terry here. Uh, he is talking to someone called uh, Vega Writers, and he says, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to please everyone. So this Vega Writers person um, put out a thing here. I worked out a good chunk of my anger needing bread, but I just, I do not for the life of me understand how Terry Metalis could give interviews saying that the old characters just didn't fit in the storyline and then bring back lore, but not Data's daughter. Terry responded, and this is so, this is so the fans it's that so me. knowing what we know. That's just such a stupid. I'm I mean, sorry. not even knowing what we know. No, it's. I mean, even it's just not nice. Like, this is a TNG story, and you couldn't have all those actors. You cannot have all these people on the screen and not have anything for them to say or do. It happened in Picard season two. Literally happened. Some of the characters didn't have anything going on. There's just too many of them. Right. You can only do so much in 10 episodes. It's silly. That, that's just a stupid thing to complain about, though, bro. It's a stupid, stupid thing to complain about. So here's what Terry had to say. And I'm, you know, Terry's, this is, this is why Terry's a nice guy. Okay. He doesn't have to do this stuff. I'm sorry I wasn't able to please everyone. We are really happy with what we've done here. Sorry if we lost you. I'm sure there will be more Soji adventures in the future. What? Yeah, did you pick that? Did you pick up on that? Yeah. Why is he talking about Soji? Well, he knows more than we know. Well, he does. So, so he's saying, I'm sure there will be more Soji adventures in the future. So Star Trek's not done with that character. No, it's not. And she's off uh, traveling the galaxy with. Um... No, that's not Soji. Oh no, that's the other one. That's dope. That's that's, that's the history version. Not oh, my bad. I'm sorry. That was they, they had to give the actors jobs. Right, 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 right. You're right. I'm some dumb. So Soji they played other characters. Soji actually never went back with them. So she was just hanging out at the Federation. Yeah, Soji's an she's uh, an ambassador for like androids. Android. Yeah. yeah. So listen, that that is part of the future of whether you like Picard season one or not, uh, or the beginning of season two. Uh, you know. That is canonical 
and that is the future of Starfleet. So you got Soji, you got several of those characters that are that are all going to be there when they hand off the baton. So Terry might be talking about, look, if we go do more Star Trek, Soji's probably going to be there. <laughs> and these other characters that got left behind. Okay, well, that is it for the weekly mm -hmm. Terry. I'm sorry I got sidetracked on that thing. I wanted to make sure that I was correct when I said that. Um, it is entirely possible we, we can get another series after this. And Terry said we're handing the baton off. He said definitely. So there's a lot. Just to be clear, there's a lot here. There's a lot that came from that panel. There's a lot writing on, on Picard Season 3. From what we know, it's going to be fantastic. From what the trailer looks like, it's going to, look, it's going to be fantastic. Star Trek isn't even close to being... Um, it's, it's not something that's going to die on the vine. Like, it might have came back, and it came back in a weird way, and it was hard to work out, but I, I feel like the growing pains of Trek being come back are starting to come to an end, and we're starting to get some decent decisions being made, and I believe that the future of Star Trek is a lot healthier than what we thought it was a year ago. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, it's not, there are a lot of people are saying it's going to be gone. Uh, guys, it's not going anywhere. It's going to keep going. And uh, you just got to find your place here in it. And, and hopefully, as we go forward, it just keeps getting better, you know. And, and we got to stop looking back and we got to look forward. Look forward to Picard season three and our, some of our favorite characters are going to be back. So, yes, Very hit, that, to what hit the subscribe button on the way to the comment section to uh, tell us that you're not going to watch any Klutzman Trek because we get a lot of those comments. <laughs> Love you guys. Hit the comment section.